Our title today are Molar Solutions and Their Dilutions. So we define a solution as a homogeneous mixture. When we say that it, that it is homogeneous, that means that it is the same throughout. That there um, is not one part of that mixture that has more or less of one component than another part of that mixture. That there, every, all components are evenly distributed throughout the mixture. We will talk more about solutions at a greater depth later in the year. But today what we need to talk about is describing how much solute we have dissolved in solvent. So the concentration of a solution describes the amount of solute. So if we're talking about salt water, that would be sodium chloride. The amount of solute dissolved in solvent. Um, so for example, water being the solvent. So sodium chloride, if we have a solution of sodium chloride, that means that our solute is the salt, sodium chloride, and the solvent is water. Now in this chapter we're, all, we're talking about aqueous solutions. So our solvent in this chapter is always going to be water. <clears throat> The greater the amount of solute, the greater the concentration of that solute in the solution. So in chemistry, generally, the concentration of solute is described in molarity. So our abbreviation for molarity is capital M. And molarity is moles per liter, meaning moles of solute per liter of solution. So it's important that we understand the, the jargon here. We say, we could look at this right here and say that we have a solution that is one molar. That's how we say it. One molar. And what that means is that we have one mole of solute per liter of solution. So for example, let's say I had a 0 0.5 molar copper 2 sulfate solution. 0 0.5 molar copper 2 sulfate, that means that I have 0 0.5 moles of CuSO4 per liter of solution. Okay, so molarity is the way that in general, there's other ways that we'll talk about later in the year, but for now, this is the most common way that we describe the amount of solute that is dissolved in solution. So there's all kinds of problems, of course, that we can do utilizing moles per liter. So let's do some of those kinds of problems. For instance, what is the molarity of a solution prepared by dissolving 11.5 grams of sodium hydroxide in enough water to make 1.5 liters of solution? So we want to know the molarity of the solution. Keeping in mind that molarity is moles per liter. So this is what we've got to have as units at the end of this problem. We're going to let the units guide us. 
So we're going to begin with what we're given, which is 11.5 grams of sodium hydroxide. Now, we don't see grams anywhere in our unit for molarity. Okay, molarity is describing pieces of stuff in solution. So we have to convert our grams of sodium hydroxide into moles of sodium hydroxide, which we know how to do very well. We're going to use the molar mass. So to calculate the molar mass of sodium hydroxide, um, you know how to do that. And sodium hydroxide is 40.00 grams of NaOH per mole of NaOH. So then our grams cancel. So we're almost there because now we've got moles in our numerator. But this is not molarity, this is just moles. So we need to know how much of the solution, what volume of solution we have. We've got 1.50 liters, so we're just going to divide by 1.50 liters. And that leaves me with moles per liter. So if we calculate that out, we should end up with 0 0.192 molar, molar sodium hydroxide. 0.192 moles per liter of sodium hydroxide. These two things are interchangeable. Interchangeable. Let's do another problem. How many grams of copper 2 sulfate are present in 500 mils of a 0 0.750 molar copper 2 sulfate solution? So we want to end up having grams in our numerator with everything else canceled out. So let's start with what we're given, which first of all is, let's start with the molarity. We have 0 0.750 moles of copper 2 sulfate per liter, right? These two things are interchangeable. This gives people problems. Big M means moles per liter. Okay, so we've got 0 0.750 moles per liter, and we have 500 mils. So if we convert that to liters, you guys, it's going to be, we're just going to move it. One, two, three. Um, 0 0.500 liters. How did I know to put that in the numerator? Because these units have to cancel. Okay, we're not looking for moles of copper 2 sulfate, we're looking for grams. So how are we going to convert from moles to grams? We're going to use the molar mass. So in this case, we've got 159.62 grams of CuSO4 per mole. Okay, did my units guide me? Yes, moles cancel, moles cancel, leaving grams in my numerator, which is what I am looking for. So that gives me 59.9 grams of copper 2 sulfate. Okay, and so that's how many grams of this salt are present in 500 milliliters of a 0 0.750 molar solution of copper 2 sulfate. We need to make solutions in chemistry all the time, molar solutions. When you guys found a stoichiometric ratio, I had to prepare for you two different 0.5 molar solutions, one of sodium hypochlorite and one of sodium thiosulfate. So how do I go about doing that? How do I prepare molar solutions? And you will do this, uh, but this is, these are the mathematics that you need to go through in order to do it. So describe how to prepare three liters 
of a 0.2 molar potassium chromate solution from the solid salt. The first thing we need to do is we need to figure out how many grams of potassium chromate we need for three liters to make a 0.2 molar solution. We need to know how much salt to weigh out to, to make this thing. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to solve for grams of potassium chromate. So um, we want to make a 0 0.200 moles K2CrO4 per liter. That's the concentration of the solution we've got to make. And how much of it do we want to make? We want to make three liters. And I know that I'm going to multiply because my units cancel. So last but not least, because my salt, my potassium chromate is coming as the solid salt, I need to know how many grams of that I'm going to weigh out to add to a solution to bring it up to 3 liters to make it a 0.2 molar solution. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to utilize its molar mass. So it is 194.2 grams of potassium chromate per mole. Cancel, cancel, and that leaves me with 116.5 grams of K2CrO4. So now what am I going to do with that? Well, I'm going to weigh out 116.5 grams of this salt. So I'm going to add... 116.5 grams of K2CrO4 to a solid, sorry, to a 3.0 liter volumetric flask. volumetric flask. And if you remember from when we did the drawings, you guys, a volumetric flask has only one mark. Two liters. You can measure one volume. This one. Two liters. Okay? They come in various sizes. So I'm going to add this 116.5 grams to a three liter volumetric flask. And then I am going to and I should have a period here. And fill to the mark with water. And I'm going to mix well. All right. So this step is very important. And that is, if I took my 116.5 grams of salt and I added it to this flask, no, 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 other way around. If I took my flask and I filled it up to three liters with water, okay? And then after I filled it to the mark, I added my 116.5 grams. Do you think my total volume at that point would still be three liters? It would not. It would be higher than three liters. It would be greater than three liters. So it's very important. The solid goes in, and then you bring the thing up to the required volume keeping in mind that the salt is going to take up some space. All right. So, there's one way we can make a solution. Often
oftentimes, though, solutions get made um, from a more concentrated form. So often solutions are prepared in a concentrated form, and then solvent is added to achieve the desired molarity, and this is known as dilution. Okay? And we do this. If you have frozen orange juice, you add water to it to dilute it, to make it to the concentration of orange juice that you want to drink. Or frozen any kind of juice we do this with. Um, and so we do this in lab as well, and you'll be doing lots of dilutions this year. Okay, so let's, let's do a quick dilution problem. Describe how to prepare one liter of 0.5 molar HCl from a 12 molar stock solution. So 12 molar is going to be our concentrated solution. 0.5 molar is what we want um, our dilution to be. Okay, 12 molar is the way that the chemical supply house will send concentrated hy um, hydrochloric acid. And so I'm often making dilutions of acid to get um, uh, a given molarity. Okay, so we're going to use a formula M1V1 is equal to M2V2. This one is referring to the concentrated and this two is referring to the dilution. M means molarity. V means volume. And the same over on this side. Molarity of concentrate times the volume of concentrate equals the molarity of dilution times the volume of dilution. Okay. So let's do this problem. <clears throat> this is our concentrate. This is our dilute. This is our dilute. So what we need to know is the volume of the concentrated that we need to utilize to make one liter of the solution. So, M1V1 equals M2. Concentrate is at 12.0 molar. We don't know what volume we're solving for that. We want to make a 0 0.500 molar solution. And we want to make 1.00 liters of it. Molarity, molarity, volume, volume. How much of this 12 molar do we need? So if we solve for this V1, we end up getting 0.0417 liters. I know my unit is liters because that unit is liters. If I did this in milliliters, this would come out in milliliters. Okay, and that's equal to 1, 2, 3, 41.7 mils. Okay, so what am I going to do with that information? Well, I'm going to do as you order. Do as you order. I'm going to add the ask to the water. So, I'm going to measure, I need how much? I need a liter. I need a thousand milliliters total. So, I'm going to measure, I hope I did my subtraction right, 958 
2.3 milliliters of water in a 1.0 liter graduated cylinder, a big graduated cylinder. Then I'm going to add forty one point seven mils of twelve molar HCl. And then, as always, I'm going to mix. Well, got all that? We're done.